Good morning, JFC Naples. We joined together, many of us virtually, to commemorate the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day, 8 May 1945. That day saw jubilant crowds amassed around the world, from Paris to Prague, Washington to Warsaw, London to Lillehammer, and Rome to Rotterdam. After six long years of war, the 8th of May 1945 marked the end of a conflict that had embroiled Europe for almost six years. It was the deadliest war in history, estimates between 50 and 85 million casualties. Civilians and soldiers alike endured hardships as the Allied forces fought to liberate the continent of Europe. Victory was hard fought. The brave Allied forces engaged in combat across the continent from north to south and east to west. Battles raged from the beaches of Normandy to the hills of Monte Cassino, just 100 kilometers from here. Many of us have relatives who fought during those campaigns. This picture on the right is the picture of Captain James Anderson, King's Royal Rifle Corps. He was my father's cousin. He made it all the way up to a place called Gradara, near Rimini on the Adriatic coast. And in September 1944, he was killed on the forward lines with his men in combat. His blood was spilled on Italian soil, and he is buried on Italian soil in the Commonwealth Cemetery in a beautiful place in Gradara, which I visited on Italian Liberation Day in 2018. Nobody else in my family had ever been there. And it was a great honor for me to do that. My father was also a participant in World War II. He was a sub-lieutenant with the Lake Superior Regiment of the 4th Canadian Infantry Division. This is his war map. This is where he landed on 19 July 1944 on D plus 44, 44 days after the Allied invasion. But rest assured, he was in combat right away, all the way through France, up into Belgium, into Holland, and finally into Germany, and up north towards Hamburg, where he demobilized at the end of the war. You can't see it, but that's his writing on the map. 8 May 1945, a day that would live in infamy with him. He kept his regimental book, the 4th Canadian Armored Division. And in this book, it listed every man that fought in combat. And in a little pencil notation, Next to each man's name that fell, he wrote a note, the date that they were killed. He seemed to be very, very concerned about the brothers, three sets of brothers, and the last man lost in combat during the war on the 7th of May, 1945, at 1800 in the evening, was the chaplain of the regiment. Today is a reminder to the heroes of the past Today is a day that we remember the reason that so many fought so hard and died for freedom. On the occasion of VE Day, U.S. President Harry S. Truman, namesake of the carrier strike group that was just here last month, announced this is a solemn and glorious hour. Citizens across the world rejoiced. Leaders like Winston Churchill and Harry S. Truman recognized the importance of nations allied together to preserve peace and security. Soon after, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was formed with the Washington Treaty of April 4th, 1949. And this is a copy of it. And it says, we are determined to safeguard the freedom, common heritage, and civilization of our peoples, founded on the principles of democracy, individual liberty, and the rule of law. They resolved to unite their efforts for collective defense and for the preservation of peace and security. The treaty is the foundation of the most powerful alliance ever formed in the world, and we just celebrated our 71st anniversary right here in the lobby of JFC. And we just added our 30th member, North Macedonia, in a solemn ceremony last month. As we speak, our NATO forces are at sea, in the air, and on land, ensuring freedom is ensured, never taken for granted, never ceded to an adversary. And even in the face of this new and lethal and unseen adversary, 
the coronavirus, we fight on together. Today, the 75th anniversary of VE Day is a powerful reminder of our strength together. We are stronger together. Thank you for your service and thank you for your faith in the Alliance.